welcome to the build log number 14 video. Wow, 14. In this video, we'll be looking at the redesign XY joiner and clamp, version 1.2 of the fan duct, and also a slightly redesigned X carriage. If you've already printed out the set of Hypercube 3D printed parts, don't worry, these are only minor changes to those existing designs. But the biggest change is to do with the XY joiner and the XY clamp. I've received a few requests in the comments sections regarding the XY joiner and clamp if they can be modified uh, to allow the encapsulation of the longer version of these linear ball bearings. So at the moment, uh, we can only insert the standard LM8 UU bearing inside the XY joiner and the XY clamp. But a lot of people are operating from printers who have the longer versions of these bearings, the LM8 LUU. So that's the only change that's been made to the XY joiner and the XY clamp. Uh, simply removed um, the support on either side to allow the bearing to fit in there and also right through the actual part itself. So if you're using the LM8 LUU, that'll slot all the way in there and then the clamp will clamp over that. However, even if you still have the smaller LM8 UU bearings, you can use two of these now. So that one can fit, say, in there, and there's, here's another one that can fit, say, there. And when you clamp over this entire assembly, it's actually a much more rigid design on the Y-axis than with just having one bearing. In fact, since I've been using this particular design, the actual uh, entire XY uh, assembly no longer ever so slightly twists or rotates on the Y-axis. I guess with the original design only having the single bearing, even though the bearing doesn't actually rotate on the Y-axis because we're only kind of clamping around the bearing and not directly over the bearing, the entire XY assembly could potentially twist or rotate around the bearing itself. So uh, by moving to either the dual bearing or to the longer bearing, that is the change that these versions 1.1 allow. So looking at the Y-axis itself, you can see the XY joiner and clamp now have two of these Elemate UU bearings inside this part. And when I try to twist the entire XY assembly, it is not twisting at all. It, this is a much stiffer uh, setup than with just having the single Elemate UU bearing inside here. Now just be mindful because we have the Y-axis end stop here and we don't want the bearing at the front of the uh, X gantry to be sticking out, otherwise we'll be prematurely uh, engaging the, uh, the Y end stop. So just have the bearing at the front flush with the housing and leave the remainder of the bearing at the rear. And if I move this now, you'll see it engages the Y end stop at the right location. One of the problems with tightening the two belts for the Core XY system is as you can tighten them independently, there's a chance that the entire X gantry could be slightly skewed in regard to the, uh, the Y axis or the Z axis. So a benefit of having these uh, linear ball bearings sticking out the rear of the uh, entire XY assembly is if we push the gantry to the rear of the frame, you can see it's now buttered up against the Y-axis shaft. So that's on the left-hand side. We move across to the right-hand side, and that bearing is also buttered up against the Y-shaft clamp. So that tells us that my gantry is parallel with the X-axis. If you push yours to the rear, and one of your bearings isn't touching the Y-shaft clamp, then you're going to have to adjust your, uh, your belts here to, to eliminate that skew so both bearings are butted up against the, uh, the rear of the frame. And that's actually a benefit of having the bearings sticking out of the XY assembly. Only a minor change to the X carriage and it's to do with the feature that sticks up out of the X carriage and this is where we cable tie uh, one end of both of the belts. So that's onto this part here. And as we tighten the belts from this side, the belts are actually pulling on this particular feature in that direction. And I'm just worried that this, as this, this part just kind of sticks up out of the X carriage, there isn't a lot of support here. So the only change that I've made is to do with that feature. And I've just added some extra support at the rear of this part. I can't add any, add any support to the front, of course, because that's where the, uh, the X end stop sits. But on the rear, there was a gap kind of in the center here. So just some extra support to help this part withstand the forces of the belts. 
arguably the hardest part to print in the entire Hypercube set is the fan duct. So I've had a go at redesigning the fan duct once again to make it easier to print. Now I know some of you uh, turn this 90 degrees this way and you print it upright and you're having success printing it like that. You can still do that. However, I've made changes to the top of the fan duct. So these are classified as bridges. So as this part is entirely hollow, the print head has to move from wall to wall and join this part up to create the ceiling here and up here. So all I've done here is I've added a, a chamfer uh, directly underneath um, this, these, these particular parts. So now when it's printing from side to side, there's, there's more of the wall for the plastic to grab onto. And another benefit of doing this is other slices, such as Cura, now see these two areas as bridges. And it actually works quite well. I've been printing this all the way down to 40 millimeters a second, which is quite slow for a bridge. And it's worked just fine. So have a go at this. Let me know if it fixes your woes with printing the fan duct. I think I have the worst luck when it comes to these tiny 30 millimeter fans. Not only did I destroy the original E3D fan that came with the hot end, I've now destroyed the replacement 30mm fan that I placed in the hot end. So here is the second replacement for the hot end. For some reason I have an urge to shove a screwdriver through here while it's spinning. That's a curse I'm trying to shake off. <laughs> 